This casting they have to make is what's called a frangible coupling. It's part of a runway light uh, for an airport and after I've cast this part, when it gets machined somewhere in it, it's machined very thin so that it will break easily. And the idea is that if the plane accidentally strikes the light on landing or on takeoff, this coupling will break rather than the plane break. Um, they must be pretty good at missing them because I only get to make maybe 10 of these every two or three years. So there isn't much demand for them. It's a split pattern and uh, I don't normally work with split patterns, but I guess I will this time. A little bit of part as usual. About there, I think. A little bit over maybe there, that looks pretty good. Now to save the uh, fine sand, fine facing sand, I'll just put these bits of wood here to guide the facing sand just where we need it over the work itself. I'm not wasted on the rest of the box. I'd like to firm it up a little over that, uh, the hex uh, in the middle because it's a bit high in the box. You notice I always fill the box, in fact I overfill it before I start ramming. That's probably well, close to an inch above I guess for our American friends and 25 millimeter for the pretty much the rest of the world. <laughs> This time I've probably filled it a good two inches over the top of the box. And now for the final ram, it's <laughs> filled about as high as I can get it. Turn it over, baseboard underneath it and all. Rub it just to make certain the parting lines are right there. Sometimes sand gets under the thing. That'll get the parting line back about right. Other half of the pattern. This other half of the pattern has got the little runner on, uh, plus somewhere for the uh, sprue to go. And there's a hole here that we'll use later to locate the feeder. Yeah, a little bit of loose sand there. Right, got rid of that. You don't sweep off the loose uh, parting agent on the pattern. Um, when you start to ram the sand, it sort of it all moves down, sort of slides off under the influence of the sand. And you want it with a pile of it along here and here, um, usually mixed in with the sand. And it makes the edges of the uh, mold very weak. That box is just a little bit sticky. A bit of graphite on the pin wouldn't hurt there. That's a little bit better. It's easier to put the facing sand on without the riser and the sprue in the way in this case. Sweep that sand out of the way here. Clean out the hole at the riser or feeder as it really should be called. So it's been cut on the bottom with a square to make the top of the hex. There we go. Push that facing sand back.
start sieving some backup sand on. Now I'll remove this one and put the sprue in place. <laughs> yes, right, okay. A little bit more of this. And away we go again. Firm up the sand around the base of the sprue and a little bit but carefully around the base of the feeder here. Now the area under the feeder here can be a bit of a steam trap so I'll just put a vent wire down in here to give the steam somewhere to go. That will do. Now give me a bit of room to work here, get rid of some of the sand. Now I could just lift this box and hope that the pattern comes with it and then lift the pattern out of this box when it's up the other way and lift the pattern out of the bottom box as well. Um, but I find that this particular pattern, it's a bit unreliable as to whether it'll stay down or come up. You just don't know what's going to happen. And in any case, I find that it's a bit easier to lift this box, lift the coke box off the pattern. To make certain it comes, uh, the pattern stays down, I'll actually wrap it down here through the riser. Now hopefully the pattern will stay in the, on the other half in the, in the drag box. We'll see. It looks like it's loose. Uh, that box is still a little sticky. It's not good. It'll be right. There we go. It's not too bad a lift. A little bit of parting there. Now, i get my little brush if I can find it. There it is. Just smooth up the junction of the sprue and the gate and then the junction of the feeder and the casting here, just very delicately. And blow all the loose sand out. Now to get the bottom half out. I found with this particular job, uh, when wrapping it, that wrapping sideways causes problems. I only wrap it long ways like this, and that seems to work best for this. So the interesting thing with a job like this, I could put a screw in there and another one in there, and then lift with both hands. Sometimes that's very difficult because you 
your hands fight each other and you, you think that the pattern's very heavy or it's stuck or, or whatever, and it's simply one hand working a bit against the other. It's usually better if you can just to use the one screw like this in the middle and only lift with the one hand and perhaps use the other as I'm going to now as just as a guide. I hate this bit. There we go. The idea is to shake a bit if you can, just a little bit. A lot of commercial foundries actually uh, have vibrators uh, that shake the whole mould uh, to help them get a good lift like that. Blow out all the uh, loose sand and the parting agent I just added. Add a core. Now, these cores are actually a bit short uh, and there's a bit of a chance metal could actually run around the end of one and fill the core up because they're, they're quite hollow. So I'll just plug it with a bit of, uh, bit of sand. Blow off any loose sand. And place it more or less in the middle. Solid end, I think, nearest the runner. That's about right. Close her up. Just a trial close at whoops this stage. Let's get it on the pins. That box is sticky. Yes it is. The pins in the pinholes need a bit need a good clean. Okay. Ooh. Blow out any loose sand. There seems to be some loose sand in there too, by God. Let's have a look with the torch and see what we've got. No, that looks alright. No, that's clean. Yep, she's all right. And before we close it, we prop that under there to hold the box. Here's a sprue extension. And that's necessary because we need to extend the feeder. This area, this feeder here, would have nowhere near enough metal in it to feed that casting, so we need to increase its volume and the only way I can really do that is to raise it higher and that's the only reason I do raise it higher just to get that extra bit of feed metal there and we're done here are the results of the the day's castings some of these uh, are, are more or less straight from the mold just with the core removed obviously um, the pouring basin here is not really very adequate for the job it's uh, not the right shape and I'm working on getting an improved one and the feeder in this case is barely barely adequate to to do a casting of this size and weight but it it seems to have worked reasonably well nonetheless probably because I use the usual exothermic up on top of the riser to, to help it and here we've got uh, a few that are, that are cut off uh, and they are now ready just for uh, my usual T5 heat treatment and then they'll go to the customer. To be honest, I'm not very happy with the finish on these. The uh, facing sand I've used, this particular batch of it, doesn't seem to be very good. I'll have to look into that too, I guess.